Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Today I'm requesting the elimination of the business inventory and machinery tax. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics this Sunday morning. Time now to hear from our Senate leaders. I want to introduce the President of the Senate, the Honorable Mitch Carmichael, Republican of Jackson County and Senate President. Good to have you on the show this morning. It's great to be with you. Uh, impressions of the Governor's State of the State Address? Well, a lot of the uh, Governor's uh, discourse uh, lines up perfectly with our agenda. We've uh, rolled that uh, agenda out in some previous comments about intermediate appellate court, substantial pay raises and investments in our public education system some uh, other initiatives that we line up very well with the governor. One of the things he raised uh, is, uh, he touched on a little bit, but it's your number one priority. In fact, Senate Bill number one is providing free technical and community college education to West Virginians. Did you wish he talked about that more, and do you feel like you have his support on that? Well, I do believe we have his support, and this is an amazing program that's been utilized in other states, and frankly, it's not free. It's uh, last dollar in for West Virginia. We're leaving so much federal dollars, on so many federal dollars on the table uh, that our students and the people that want to return to the workforce are unable to capture. So this program enables us to draw down these federal funds. It provides drug testing for uh, those who are availing themselves of the program. And it pretty much guarantees a job afterwards because we have all these jobs that are in the state of West Virginia with an untrained workforce. And we want to, uh, our people to go to work. And more than anything, that will generate revenue for our state. The governor talked about one of his new initiatives called Jim's Dream. I believe it would provide like $25, $30 million specifically for job training to people that have had drug addiction problems. They've come out of treatment, but they still can't pass a drug test or whatever. I mean, do you support that? And is that a thing to do? Because we're hearing from a lot of companies that we don't have enough people trained to work the jobs that they need filled. Well, you're right, Mark. We don't have enough people that are trained to fill the jobs that are now available in West Virginia. And certainly all those who have been addicted or uh, uh, affected by the drug crisis need a path to become productive members of society again. I'm uh, anxious to learn more about that program. I want to ask you about something where the two sides really disagree, and that's elimination of the business inventory tax. Uh, the governor proposed it uh, the other night during the State of the State. There was loud applause. The Republicans all stood up, the Democrats sat silent. Uh, how are you going to work that out? Well, we'll work it out. Uh, what I will say is uh, the elimination of the personal property tax on business inventory and equipment has been studied by Republican governors, Democrat governors, consultants from throughout the nation and frankly the world. Look at West Virginia. That is the number one job killing tax in our code. Other states do not implement a tax on the very capital equipment that produces jobs and opportunities. So if you're against eliminating that tax, you're really against jobs and opportunity. We recognize that those dollars must be backfilled to the counties, but we'll work closely with our colleagues across the aisle to uh, convince them that this is the right policy. Frankly, their Democrat governors in the past, like uh, now Senator Manchin, have advocated for this as well. Let's talk about another area of difference, and that is marijuana. Let me break this into two questions. Uh, first of all, do you in any way favor legalization of recreational marijuana? No. I, uh, I pretty much line up with the governor's position on this. Uh, I am a complete advocate for medical marijuana. I, it passed under uh, you know my leadership in the state senate. So it will, uh, we need some corrections to that bill as it went through, but as far as full recreational legalization, no. Okay. Well, let's talk about medical marijuana because a lot of folks were hoping that the governor would get into specifics in the state of the state is how do you fix, how do you break this log jam with the banking problem in getting medical marijuana on board? It's supposed to be legal and available July 1st this year. A lot of folks don't think it'll happen. What needs to be done? What can you guys do to fix it? Well, we are examining it from a specific standpoint and uh, we'll have very specific bills. As you know, Mark, though, this is a federal issue in many regards. Uh, so as, as it relates to implementing this policy, we're going to do everything humanly, compassionately possible to, to make this product available for those who are suffering from affliction and uh, so forth to relieve their suffering and pain. But the governor mentioned it, obviously didn't have a specific bill about it. I don't think it was the venue to do so, but he recognizes its need. All right, it's going to be a busy year this year under the dome at the Capitol. We want to thank Senate President Mitch Carmichael for joining us. Thank you, We're going Mark. to be taping the show each and every week here in the Capitol, so go back and join us. We'll okay? be happy to. Thank you. All right, the Democrats get equal time on the Senate leadership. We'll hear from Roman Prezioso after this break. Stay with us.